climate change, adaptation and health. We know that the massive emissions of human-generated greenhouse gases are changing the climate. This change takes on very different forms in different regions. In some places, for example, flooding occurs, while others suffer drought or heavy rainfall and extreme storms. The one thing the various impacts of climate change have in common is that directly or indirectly, they impact human health. Natural disasters are, of course, the most direct example. But extreme heat puts a strain on the human body too. These consequences are self-evident. Changes in temperatures and precipitation patterns also have indirect consequences for human health, including altering the permissive environments for malaria or dengue fever. These diseases are among the so-called vector-borne diseases that are transmitted by mosquitoes and flies, for example. Furthermore, waterborne diseases such as typhoid fever or cholera are becoming more common due to unclean water. Climate change can also cause harvest losses and, as a result, malnutrition. Both direct and indirect impacts can be devastating if we are unprepared. In this mountain village, for example, the child has a fever brought on by malaria. They never used to get this here. It has only been able to spread due to the rise in temperature. Professional health workers here are not adequately trained to recognize the disease. Or here, down at the river, the changes in precipitation patterns are causing it to overflow its banks more frequently, contaminating the drinking water and causing many people to fall ill. It is not only that the health center is not coping with this sudden surge in demand for its services, the fields are no longer being tended because the laborers are off sick. Food supplies are starting to run low. In short, the demands on health services are increasing as a result of climate change. However, only very few are prepared for this. That has to change, but how? Well, first at the planning level, we have to start taking climate change into perspective and review all measures against the backdrop of future climate impacts. If we start doing this, then other key steps will follow. For example, the sick child. In the next biggest hospital, the child is able to get the treatment it needs. Here, they recognize the disease. Professional health workers in the mountain region also have to receive the necessary training. Adaptation measures also have to be taken into account in the budget. Needs-oriented planning of staff and medicines is of vital importance in this context. However, it is equally important to educate people. A few changes in people's habits and a few safety measures can minimize many risks. People just have to know what they are and how to apply them. For needs-oriented planning at national and regional level, it is important to better record and monitor the burden of diseases, including their geographical distribution, and to analyze that data together with climate data. Furthermore, the topic of health also needs to be taken into account in other sectors and in their climate adaptation strategies. In conclusion, Climate change is threatening human health in various ways. Health sector successes achieved in the past are now at risk. It is time to act. First, the health system must be strengthened at all levels. That is important anyway. But due to the additional needs resulting from climate change, there is even greater urgency now. Second, Climate change has to be mainstreamed into the health sector, just as health issues need to be mainstreamed into other sectors' adaptation strategies. This will allow for timely preparation for new challenges and the rollout of corresponding measures.